Om Namah Shiva students as you have been introduced to the story the enemy today we will be starting to read it keep your reader book with us opened at page 24 and follow the class so now let's read the enemy by pearl s buck before you read it is the time of the world war an american prisoner of war is washed ashore in a dying state and is found at the doorstep of a japanese doctor should he save him as a doctor or hand him over to the army as a patriot dr sadao hoki's house was built on a spot of the japanese coast where as a little boy he had often played the low square stone house was set upon rocks well above a narrow beach that was outlined with bent pines as a boy Sadao had climbed the pines supporting himself on his bare feet as he had seen men do in the south seas when they climbed for coconuts his father had taken him often to the islands of those seas and never had he failed to say to the little brave boy at his side those islands yonder they are the stepping stones to the future for japan where shall we step from them Sadao had asked seriously who knows his father had answered who can limit our future it depends on what we make it so dr sadao hoki lives in his childhood home in japan nestled between pine trees and a small beach when he was a little boy he used to climb the pines as if they were the palm trees he had seen in his frequent visits to the islands of the south seas on every visit to the islands sadao's father would point towards the islands and would say that those were the stepping stones towards the future of japan dr sadao would question him childishly that where would they reach from those islands his father would reply that it was not known as it depended on the future the future had no limits it depended on mankind how it shaped its future so we see that the story opens with a flashback from sadao's childhood which immediately establishes his father's japanese patriotism and belief in japan's capacity for greatness sadao's father also initially appears to be a warm encouraging father figure which the story will soon complicate sadao had taken this into his mind as he did everything his father said his father who never joked or played with him but who spent infinite pains upon him who was his only son sadao knew that his education was his father's chief concern for this reason he had been sent at 22 to america to learn all that could be learned of surgery and medicine he had come back at 30 and before his father died he had seen sadao become famous not only as a surgeon but as a scientist because he was perfecting a discovery which would render wounds entirely clean he had not been sent a prod with the troops also he knew there was some slight danger that the old general might need an operation for a condition for which he was now being treated medically and for this possibility sadao was being kept in japan So Sadao written all the things that his father would tell him as a child. His father never played or joked with him. They shared a mature relation and his father underwent a lot of hardships to bring him up. Sadao knew that his father was concerned about his education. He was sent to America at the age of 22 to study surgery and medicine. He returned at the age of 30. Before dying, Sadao's father saw Sadao become famous not only as a surgeon 
but also as a scientist. Sadao was on his way to discover a treatment for wounds which would make them absolutely clean. So he was not sent abroad with the armed forces as a doctor. Also he was retained in Japan because the old general was suffering from an ailment which needed to be operated upon in case of an emergency. Here we see that Sadao's father immediately transforms from a seemingly warm, compassionate father, encouraging his son to reach for greatness to a cold, harsh man who pushes his son to be the best. The fact that Sadao's education is his father's chief concern also points to the story's preoccupation with duty. Clouds were rising from the ocean now. The unexpected warmth of the past few days had at night drawn heavy fog from the cold waves. Sadao watched mists hide outlines of a little island near the shore and then come creeping up the beach below the house, wreathing around the pines. In a few minutes, fog would be wrapped about the house too. Then he would go into the room where Hannah, his wife, would be waiting for him with the two children. So now the writer describes the scene outside Dr. Sadao's house. As the days were unusually warm and the sea waves were cold, the nights became foggy. Dr. Sadao saw the boundary of a nearby island became invisible gradually as it got covered in the mist. Slowly, the mist was coming closer to him. Soon, there would be mist all around his house. At that time, he would go back into the house to his wife Hannah, who was waiting for him along with their two children. When the Second World War broke out, Sadao had been working on an important medical discovery. For this reason, and because he needed to be near the general who might need an operation, Sadao was required to stay in Japan rather than join the war effort. This passage introduces the many facets of Sadao's identity and the different duties that accompany those identities. As a Japanese citizen, he was a duty to do whatever his country asks of him. And as a skilled surgeon, he has a duty to tend to his patients. Students, I am stopping over here today. I will continue in the next class. Thank you. Om Namah Shivaya.